Hey guys, what's happening? We're back with some more Fakemon for our newly named Maza region and a hypothetical 9th generation of Pokemon. So far, we've designed 14 new Pokemon, including the three evolutionary lines of the starters, a two-stage Route 1 normal type Pokemon, and a three-stage flying type line. Now, we're moving on to another staple of every Pokemon game, the Route 1 bug types. Now, this designation I've given the design trope of the Root 1 bug types isn't technically accurate, so I'll specify what I'm referring to. Basically, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Pokemon or have just recently gotten into the franchise, every new Pokemon game eases the player into a new region with weak, common, and subjectively unexciting bug type Pokemon. It's more of a symbolic gesture than anything else, and like the starters and other Pokemon you catch early on in the game, these Pokemon follow a trend of starting off as very unimposing, non-threatening monsters and grow alongside the player as they progress through the game, giving a real feeling of accomplishment to anyone who is willing to put in the time raising these relatively weak Pokemon. This whole process exists on a much more micro scale than other Pokemon in the game, as the bug types tend to evolve at rather low levels, and thus allows the player to access somewhat stronger Pokemon very early on in the game at the cost of investing the effort into battling with a first and sometimes second stage that are incredibly hard to use effectively, especially when compared to the strength of starter Pokemon. Although this trend has changed in newer generations where the starter bug Pokemon are actually a bit stronger and take longer to evolve. But there's another theme that applies to these and many Bug-type Pokémon. You see, in Bugs, more than any other types of Pokémon, the extent of which a Pokémon can change between its first and final form is exemplified to the most dramatic degree. This is, of course, based off of the real-life phenomenon of metamorphosis, a process of growth and change that many Bugs undergo, wherein their appearance at birth is almost unrecognizable compared to their adult form. After all, the whole concept of evolution in the context of Pokémon is often misconstrued by fans of the series making their own designs. In most cases, when a Pokémon evolves, it's not just the same as the first form with a few extra features added on. Each stage in the evolution is supposed to represent a different species, and in my opinion, the strongest Pokémon designs are the ones that connect thematically more than visually between forms, rather than the ones that remain more or less unchanged as they evolve. So, for my fictional Gen 9 bug type, I'm going to be focusing around a theme, rather than a design, and exploring several different ways to translate that theme into an interesting, exciting new monster that, while taking physical influences from the real world, will not be restricted to the laws of science that we're familiar with. Now, of course, we're sticking with the geographical influence of Mexico as the point of inspiration for this region, and when I asked you guys what kind of bug you thought would best vibe in this kind of setting, a lot of you suggested the honeypot ant. Honeypot ants are not exclusive to Mexico, but wherever they are, they make quite an impact on the population of people they share their home with. The honeypot ants, as the name suggests, are known for their expandable admums wherein specialized members of the colony collect and store sweet nectar that can be consumed by other ants. And, as it turns out, by people. In a lot of places, honeypot ants are considered a delicious treat, and, well, that much at least I wanted to leave out of my Pokemon design. I didn't really want people eating Mini Mellow. It's just too cute! You see, one of the biggest challenges when creating a Bug-type Pokémon is making sure that despite the fact that a lot of people are disgusted or afraid of arthropods, the Pokémon is still appealing to a player, especially children. Even when the Bugs Pokémon are based off of have very few features that people could call cute, the designers still manage to keep their designs friendly and appealing, at least in the first stage. So I made my honeypot ant a big-bellied, round-eyed cutie that I imagined bouncing around like a big old beach ball. Well, uh, actually a small old beach ball. They are ants, after all. Mini Mello, the sugar ant Pokemon. These Pokemon live in complex societies of other bug Pokemon that all support each other in different ways. Mini Mello has a specialized organ in their abdomen that allows them to store the sweet nectar from plants and distribute it at will. Strangely, Mini Mello is unable to digest this nectar and never actually consumes it. When threatened, this Pokémon can regurgitate the nectar at surprising velocity, coating its attacker in a sweet, sticky goo that gives Mini Mello just enough time to escape. For the next stage of this line, I wanted to continue with the theme of food, not just in the sense of the Pokémon being based off of animals that people eat, but the animals themselves and their specialized way of harvesting food. There's another type of ant that you're likely to find on a dinner plate in Mexico, the Chiquitanas, or Ata Mexicana. 
Chikatanas are a type of leafcutter ant, and coincidentally, they're just as picky about their food as the people who wouldn't want ants in a quesadilla. You might think that leafcutter ants eat leaves, as they're specialized for neatly harvesting slices of foliage that they then hoist back to their colony. But in fact, the leaves are not for eating, they're for farming. Leafcutter ants are one of the few animals on earth that actually domesticate their own crop, a special kind of fungus that they feed and cultivate using the leaves that they harvest, that in turn, feeds them. It's an amazing little piece of zoology that goes completely underappreciated in popular media. Like the honeypot ants, these critters specialize in producing and storing their own food, and thus the connection between the first and second form is solidified. And of course, like I said before, both real-life species are food themselves. But, uh, we don't need to focus too much on that. Chikata, the Cutter Ant Pokemon Chikata harvest a special type of leaf from the same plant that Mini Mello get their nectar from. While Chikata can't actually eat the leaves they collect, other Pokemon in their colony love them, and so they use the leaves to supply a food source for the other members of their nest. Their jaws are incredibly strong, as the leaves themselves are like plastic and cannot be cut easily. Though they don't hunt for their prey, Chikata can deliver a nasty bite if they feel threatened. Now, for the final form, it was time to get dark. Literally. There are no bug and dark type Pokemon, did you know that? So we need one. Right now. And what better inspiration for a dark type bug than the Tarantula Hawk Wasp, a cousin to all ants, and one of the most sinister insects around. Now, like the Chikatanas and the Honeypot Ant, Tarantula Hawks have a very clever way of gathering food. But unlike the aforementioned bugs, it's at the expense of another living, breathing animal. As the name may suggest, Tarantula Hawks have an affinity for large spiders. Not because they eat them, but because their babies do. These wasps are specially adapted for incapacitating spiders sometimes three times larger than themselves in the form of a very powerful, paralyzing sting. But this doesn't kill the animal, that would defeat the whole purpose. The tarantula hawk needs the spider alive if she wants to then drag it into her burrow and lay a singular egg on the catch. The egg will then hatch into a larva that will proceed to devour the spider alive, intentionally avoiding vital organs so that the meat stays fresh for as long as possible. Then, once the entire spider is consumed, the larva pupates and transforms into the adult form, a terrifying hunter that has a taste for… nectar. Yeah, the adults love sugary syrup. So much so, in fact, that particularly fragrant sweets can actually intoxicate the wasps to the point where they can't even fly straight anymore. And that, my friends, is the incredibly dark ending to a line that was otherwise kind of cute and innocent. Sorry, but also not sorry. Noctavispa, the hawk wasp Pokemon. Noctavispa are the leaders of vast colonies of both Chikata and Mini Mello, and help support the nests by bringing in live prey for their subjects to eat. Noctavispa themselves can only digest the special nectar produced by Mini Mello, and Mini Mello can only digest living flesh. While Mini Mello cannot hunt for itself, Noctavispa bring their prey directly to them, and the catch is kept alive and healthy with special nutrient rich leaves brought in by Chikata. The whole system is kept in check by a few powerful Noctavispa, and they protect their empires with brutal force and sinister cunning. So there we go, the finished Route 1 bug type line. What do you guys think? Obviously this won't be the last bug type in this region, and I know you guys have ideas for more, so leave those thoughts down in the comments and discuss them with other fans in the Discord. I think next I'm going to do a two-stage dark type Pokemon, most gens have this, so let me know if you have any ideas for that. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace!